was Friday. Well, it was Friday. <laughs> and what does come today, Mommy? The mail. Um, well, mail come? Yes. Does Sebastian have a special line? Nope. Nope. He just gets to be Sebastian. Why, Daddy? Why did say hello? Hello. Okay, now say goodbye. 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 We had to mollify the children. <laughs> Willow especially was super excited because Mommy... Put makeup on her. So she has gold eyeshadow and little blue dots on her eyes. Yeah, she was very excited about it. Um, well, Willow is correct about one thing, is that it is Friday. Yes. And the air is on, I apologize. Yeah, um, yeah, the air is on. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I got a new shirt. She sure did. Powdered Toast Man <laughs> with a free log. I did not get a new shirt, so I am once again wearing this Brooks Brothers do you wear that, like, every week? I don't even pay attention. I, I wear it a lot. Um, I'm really fond of the shirt. I like everything about it. I like the colors. I like the stripes. I like the company. Brooks Brothers of Blessed Memory, now gone. They went out of business. I know. You've told me. I tell you, that one time I went to that one Brooks Brothers by Harvard, Harvard Square, and it was still little old men in perfect suits, and they had an entire, like, section of wall that was nothing but bolts of fabric. And you could look at all the different fabrics. They and all the old men are impeccably clean and well dressed, and then with the measuring tapes around their necks. Nobody dresses like that anymore. What? It's just it is what it is. Uh -huh. In any case, Friday. Yeah. So I guess let's do wrist check. Wrist check. Okay. Okay, it's wrist check time. Yay. I decided to wear this. I'm so glad it's such a great watch. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful, and that's all original loom. God, that's a beautiful watch. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am still wearing my J13085 or whatever the heck this thing is. It, it, it was some gentleman's watch, uh, and I got it for, I don't know, a few dollars. And um, it arrived with a smash crystal and missing the sweep hand, and uh, but the movement's 39 joules, uh, and I when I was servicing it, it and cleaning it and opening it up, it's it it smelled like I I mean this in a good way. It smells like it smelled like clearly a, a grandfather's like I don't know dresser drawer. It had that sort of talc. Old Spice smell to it, and so it's sort of a nostalgic smell of you know the grandfathers that are all gone now, and what those guys were like, the dudes who were came up out you know in World War II, and then at their prime was you know in the 40s and the 50s and into the 60s when they were retiring. That's what this reminded me of. Too much crafting. Too much crafting. <laughs> I don't know why ladies like crafting so much. I don't know. What? I don't know. I don't I'm sorry, I'm distracted by what's that wet thing on the couch? <laughs> I have to go look at it. Well, it's by where Sadie hangs out. It's an optical illusion. Oh, it's just the fabric. Okay. Thank goodness. The thing with living in a house full of animals, which includes, of course, other people, <laughs> uh, is that everything gets messy. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah, the upstairs is a mess. I know, and it's like how I, uh, last week, I mean, I didn't even deep clean last week. It was the week before that I deep cleaned, but the carpet in the... I just vacuumed it yesterday. It's the dog. It's the dog. He goes under there and eats things. Yeah. Yeah, he's a giant dog with giant teeth, and he eats giant Legos. And, but he doesn't eat his breakfast. No. He doesn't he'll like eat, Costco food. Yeah, he'll he'll eat a he'll eat um, a Duplo Lego block with pleasure. But he'll he, chew on it, not literally eat it. Yeah, he chews on it, rips it to pieces, but he won't eat his his Costco dinner, breakfast, whatever. He won't touch it. Nope. Oh well, whatever. These people are not here to hear about our dog problems. Are you sure? <laughs> I am, well, as sure as I am of anything. God, I don't let him lick me. Like, I think it's disgusting. And yesterday... And he loves us. Yes. And yesterday I was lying on the couch playing video games. And all of a sudden he just spreads out on me. And he lies on me. And I'm like, get off of me. You're so fat. And I go like this. And get to snout in between my arms and just start licking me. He got me in the mouth. It was so gross. Yeah. <laughs> 
Shut up. Shut up. Yes, that's what she said. I didn't say anything. You gave me that look. Well, you know, I'm just trying to hold it together today. Oh, okay. It's Friday. Willow said she wanted pizza. Okay. And nobody else wants pizza. I can make her a little pizza. There's a ball of dough in the freezer. Remind I me. I was going to make pizza. Oh, well, then there you are. Sadie's the only one that's sick of pizza. Well, you know what? Like your whole bit. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, let's do this thing. CMB. I was just about to say, how on earth can you cope with the kids, the misses, LOL, the animals, kids, LOL, and the washer dryer <laughs> and the heating system? I would go insane in a matter of days. You know, it's just compartmentalization. You just do your best to filter it out mentally. The problem just... is we have to do laundry almost every day because of children. And I had to give up my office because we had a third child. And so I am... Until... Like, if you go back to, like, the super early videos when all you saw were his hands, he was in a completely different room. Right, which is now a little boy's room. Yes. Um, one of these days, if we ever get ourselves under control, which we never will, I'm going to buy one of those pre-made cabiny things. You can buy a kit, basically, for, like, a, a little cabin with a porch and everything else like that, because we've got a big backyard, and we're going to put it out there, and that's where the office is going to be. That's exactly what we're going to have money to do. I swear to God, it's going to happen. <laughs> and, I can and see the it sunroom. Like, oh, the sunroom's going to happen, too. Okay. The sunroom is going to happen. It has to happen. The fact that it's not there is an affront. It should be there. It was meant to be there. And when it's finally built, it will be as though it had always been there. Okay. If you say so. I That's my opinion, anyway. I know. Well, it's not going to happen right away. No. Okay, Daniel Blair, thanks for the breakaway to see the Z199N link close up. I decided to order some small stainless capillary tubes, 1.7 millimeters ID, and I think what I'll do is cut them into small pieces and fit them into spring bar to create a simple end link. If I get adventurous, I may actually silver solder a thin piece of stainless across them to form an actual end link. Who knows? Maybe it'll be good for what whales... God! Stop it! <laughs> that was against Sabrina to say it out loud. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to read every question now to make sure nobody else Fs with me. No, no, I, that was the only one. <laughs> um, if I don't know about your local hardware stores, but here, if you go, they have those displays of like crafting material, like sheets of steel and copper and uh, brass and stuff like that, and tubes and, and bars and things like this. The, my local one sells different things of stainless steel, tubes of stainless steel, different... Um, diameters of it and if you just basically if you take that tube and you just uh, well this isn't a tube but imagine that this is a tube okay imagine he this likes is, to walk around with random swords oh uh, well it was this i mean it was I, I had to pick it up and basically use a dremel and go zzz, 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 and you just you just take out sections of it but leave this part that would work so and actually it wouldn't really i don't think it would be that hard um and then once you get all of that, then it's just a matter of cleaning up the burrs and, and then maybe brushing it to make it look a little more professional. Like, do all that stuff, get rid of the burrs, cut, make the cut out the way it's supposed to be, and then maybe put it on a, a, a dowel and in a slower drill bit or something, and then, like, use, like, a scotch Brite pad and just spin it, and then you scotch Brite it, and it'll probably look pretty decent. And if it doesn't reach, if it, it being round is it's too big, you can take it and squish it like this so it reaches out further from underneath the lugs. That's what I was thinking about trying. What? Just waiting. Looks like you're thinking about Brittany. I'm not thinking about Brittany. I'm thinking about Cher. Thinking I, about Cher? Yeah, because I was listening to my Songs I Like playlist, and if you can turn back time came on because of Deadpool, too. Uh... Ella Bay Forever. Two things, Spencer. First, I would hate to guess how much extra cleaning work went into that bezel case, and I will be giving my turtle an extra rinse an extra rise of next time I jump in the brine. Second, the work you did to restore the loom was brilliant, and the owner certainly made the right choice. Can't believe the difference between the before and after. Yeah, I'm very proud of how that stuff came out, and I, I really... I'm, I'm glad that it's apparent to somebody else that cleaning has such power. Um, it's it, it's not... I, I keep thinking, I'm like, well, this stuff... They're building a fort, or a castle, or something. Uh, 
I, I keep thinking the effect of cleaning sometimes isn't visible to everybody, but um, yeah, that one came out really well. The case, the the bezel though, that was nuts. I can't remember the last time I've seen that. This was a 6309 diver, the watch I fixed yesterday, and it has the a ring, a crystal retaining ring that snaps on the case and holds the crystal in place. This one, the person had never cleaned it and they clearly were in a salty environment all the time, so water got in underneath that and rust swells. Rust is bigger than the metal it comes from. It's like how ice is kind of bigger than water. And so it expanded and it shattered the ring in two different places. It was amazing. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the loom cleaning came out really well. Um, I could have gone a little more nuts on, that, on the minute hand, but the problem is that if you use too much of that stuff, it can pull uh, copper oxides out of the hands and then the loom turns this kind of green color. So you've got to, I've learned through trial and error that you have to kind of dial it back a little bit. Hi. Hi. Are you done? As much as I'll ever be. God. It's going to be such a mess when I go up there and they're going to jump on me for lunch. Jim Canatero. I like using knife sharpened chopsticks to clean these cases. They're super hardwood, so they don't break, and they're nice and thick for good leverage. You know, that's true. That's not a bad idea. And it's certainly perhaps a greener option than using my little toothpicks. I, I'm very used to using the round wood toothpicks because I can use them for a variety of things. You can shape, you can cut the front and you can make them into little wedges. You can also cut the fronts. And if you do it just right, um, they can they can work very well as a fine applicator. Because uh, you, you get like the little and frilly bits of the wood if you get it thin enough and it'll, it'll bleed things nicely. And I can change it how I wish. Um, but that's not a bad idea for cleaning really filthy cases. Time to get some Chinese food. We have, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as, and this morning it's like I'm looking at Sabrina. Sabrina's looking at me and she looks down and I'm demonstrating how much my pants don't fit anymore. <laughs> you won't go to the gym. Because... I went to the, we went to the gym for four years and then this thing happened. We just need to start counting calories again. I, you don't. I do. Oh. <laughs> uh, RG. Hi, SNS. What are your thoughts on the legitimacy of the Aussie Pogue as a genuine reference? I was surprised to learn from a recent debate on Instagram. There is a group of enthusiasts calling it a Franken with the wrong chapter ring on the basis of absence of colored catalog pictures proving its legitimacy. Oh, I can't believe people. This is like... I don't know if you're angry at them or the world. I'm not angry at anybody. Okay, I'm here just, it goes. I, I, I'm, I'm not angry at anybody. I'm just amazed that this is still being debated. The Aussie Pogue was absolutely a real variant. 100%. Um, we know this, and we know that it was sold by Seiko for a few reasons. Uh, sort of anecdotal, circumstantial evidence. I have owned, I don't even know how many... Aussie pokes. Um, I would like to think that I have a pretty good handle on when something is original and has never been opened uh, is original to itself. I've seen a few of these watches. It's possible I'm mistaken, but I've owned so many pokes, uh, Aussie pokes, with that configuration, that specific configuration. There's no, uh, there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, I've owned, I've owned examples that were clearly original, that had, um, that had never been touched, never been opened, that were the way that they were from the time that they were made. Also, but more compellingly, beyond the fact that I own an ad, a catalog ad, notice how people are saying that you don't have any color photographs. Where's your ad? It's, it's over there. Where? I, I can get it. Uh, That's what I was gonna ask. I thought we'd gone through this before. Oh, oh many times. <laughs> So this is the, the thing. People used to say, oh, they never existed because there's no photographic evidence. Then I got my catalog, my Universal Suppliers catalog, which is Reese, which is from 1972. Look at this brown and tan. But uh, I'm trying to see. You can see right there in the middle. But it's not colored. What? I'm not saying they're right. I'm just You're playing saying... devil's advocate. Yes. 
Okay, well, here is, here is the deal. Okay, let's look at it this way. This is, no, so this was like, babes, they were like a wholesaler out of uh, Hong Kong. And so they would sell basically back stock of older Seiko models or things that they could get their hands on. Like they sell a 6105 in this, but it's the early one, which had been discontinued like a year and a half previously. So here, there, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Seven uh, 6139-7002, 6139-8020, I believe, I don't, I'm, I'm guessing. And here's this one. And it's listed as 6139-6000. Uh, it's proof marked. It has a two-part sweep. It clearly has a black chapter ring. It's on a chiclet bracelet. Now, both of these models are known silver dials, period. That's a silver dial. That's a silver dial. They were never made in any other... When In this configuration, they were silver. This, albeit black and white, the tone of this black and white is darker. It's darker than this silver. It's darker than this silver. That's a darker silver. Now, the silver pogues, the real silver pogues, are the same basic color. In fact, they're even brighter than these. This is sort of a blue. Um, and this one... Is, but it's silver silver. This is clearly darker that is a gold dial. The silver dials are incredibly rare, and there's there's no photographic evidence of those. They're not in any catalog, and no one questions them at all, period. This one, that's a gold. There's the proof of it right there. Anybody at this point, in my opinion, who is arguing against the existence of a Seiko Pogue, uh, an Aussie Pogue, is, they're just being ordinary. But the last piece, Adrian Selleck of Vintage Time Australia. Um, he has his father's Aussie Pogue. He's in Australia. His father bought the watch new, and he has a picture of his father wearing the watch in the 70s, and the black chapter ring is clearly visible. Well, then I think that's evidence enough, more than you're saying. No, they're going to move the goalposts. They're going to say it has to be official Seiko color advertising. They'll just, people who, anybody at this point, who is, is trying to be ornery and saying, oh, the bossy poke didn't exist. They're, 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 they're already ignoring all the evidence that's out there. My question is, who cares? People like this. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it doesn't really matter. But, I mean, I come from, I was raised by scientists. And so I, you know, the evidence is clearly there. If somebody is refusing to see clearly verifiable evidence and is asserting the opposite, it's no different than claiming that the earth is flat or that vaccines don't work. Not to get political about it, but... That shouldn't be a political thing. It's not a, what, Aussie Pogues? Exactly, and vaccines. And vaccines, no, it should not be. <laughs> and the flat earth. <laughs> and the flat earth, or Dr. Anthony Fauci. Now we're going to stop. Um, 247ADT. Sounds like you two are living in the Ren and Snoopy Space Madness episode. That was my inspiration for getting this. Yeah. Because I laughed so hard. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, we, I really feel bad for you. You guys are suffering. No, we aren't suffering. I haven't had a cold in nine months. It's awesome. It's just being locked in the house with all the three of them all day since March is tough. But also I had to accept my fate in life, like, because schools, you don't know if they're going to reopen or not. And our school district has an online program that's separate from the schools themselves. And I had to just accept that I was going to enroll them to that, which I'm working on. And they're just going to be home. It's just because they're going to cancel the school year anyway, and they should. Um, so it is, we just have to deal with it and it is what it is mm -hmm. um gosh there was something else i was gonna say what the heck was it i don't remember it'll come to me i uh, hope okay <sighs> everything's fine do you want to take a break why i don't know maybe you need a break you know what i noticed what <laughs> it's so stupid so i love Frosted mini wheat box. It says we'll keep adults full for three and a half hours, and I'm like, okay. And actually, it's true. Really? Yeah, I'm not hungry. Well, this morning I had some, and I looked at the thing in the box and said, "We'll we'll hold you till lunchtime." And I'm like, they don't know me very well. <laughs> but I mean, so far I feel okay. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. I saw a recipe yesterday for using up old rice using uh. 
uh, diced pineapple and fried spam. You mix it all together. I bet it's pretty good. Uh, anyway, go on. From Rob, when I lived in Vancouver, because it's so downtown living urbanized, there is a fair amount of scooters. It was not uncommon to see people riding the old Vespas, the ones with the full-size spare tire, and the people, I call them hipsters, they would be wearing the three-fourths length leather jackets, the old-style bowl-shaped helmets with the heavy leather strap and side flaps and the old-style goggles that are um, on them and you pull them down. I don't know much about Vespas, but these people play the entire thing outright. You are so cool when you were in San Francisco. I'm going to have to find a photograph and insert it. Is here. it with your shoes? Yeah, my shoes and my helmet. And... <laughs> Hang on. It, I remember the first time you showed me that picture, I laughed so hard. It just, the thing is, is that those old Vespas, back in those days, they were cheap. I, I got my my Cobalt Blue Super 150, it was a 70 or a 71, and I got that, um, some guy, some guy owned it, it was in pieces, shoved in a derelict PG&E electric company van in his backyard, and I got it for... $85? Something like that? Okay. Original paint and everything. The engine had been taken out of it, but I got all this stuff. It was an ad in the paper, and we drove up there and got it. In those days, you could get it for cheap. I bought a P200 out of somebody's garage sale on Lower Haight. He had his garage open, and there was a P200 there. It was beat up, but I bought it, and I restored that thing my own. I wrote it a lot, and I got that for $200. Um, then Vespas got really expensive, and it's just silly. It's like all this old stuff, all these old watch collectibles. And back in those days, I mean, you could get old Rolex, you know, 1680s for a few hundred dollars. Literally, everything's expensive now. So there are no more scooter gangs because kids, because kids, kids, young kids with jobs can't af can't afford them. And they have video games to play. And they have video games to play. But back in the day, it was fun. We used to have huge rallies in San Francisco. I mean, in the glory glory days huge rallies in San Francisco, four or five hundred scooters, and we would block traffic through downtown San Francisco. It wasn't planned or anything. I mean, like, in the sense that we had police presence or anything. We would just stop traffic and, and just ride. God, that's ride. so annoying. And it would go on forever. Think of it, hundreds of scooters, hundreds of Vespas and Lambrettas. Good times. Okay. I was busy watching Ren and Stimpy at the time. So were, so were we. Oh, well. There you go. Anyway. Onward. And I was eating my Gushers. No, I was not eating Gushers. I was smoking cigarettes and eating burritos. <laughs> okay. How would you pronounce it? Green name? Spidik 8. The Helm watches are incredible, Spencer. I have a black dial Komodo and love it and did it an in-depth review on my channel. It is, without doubt, by far the best microband watch I've ever bought or handled. And the thing is a tank. The Loom beats everything I've ever had hands down. It came with a specific sort of pressure testing. I've tested it on my own Elma vacuum tester and it barely deflected at all. It's, um, it's so solid. Even other divers I have show more expansion. It is solid. And and as much as I love Seikos, I have this is so much better built. Like many ask why some Seikos are so expensive when the homage Heim Heimdollar, or okay. whatever it is, etc. are a fraction. Well, these are a genuine example of why can't Seiko do better when a Canadian micro brand can make something like this. They are chunky but not large in diameter, very thick, and they have heft, but I like that in a dive watch. Well, I don't know. I need to see one. Um, I don't think they were terribly expensive. I need to look at them um, to sort of figure out what the heck is going on with them. There's my own, It's not even an objection. So much about watches, as you know, is personal. It's very, very personal. That style of watch, it's real bright, very strong, strong designs, and it, it struck me as a little loud, even though I do like loud things um, in terms of design. I'll look at it again. Like your shoes. Oh, they were great. <laughs> they were great. I loved those shoes. Two-tone creepers. Three-inch soles. Black and white. That was the way to go. <laughs> I don't know you. 
I tell you, it was the way to be. Two tone creepers, uh, low tops, uh, black and white with uh, with with um, uh, beautiful beautiful uh, poke work on the on the leather itself. Pair of vintage Redline Levi's, uh, black and white bowling shirt over a white T-shirt, greased hair, the whole thing. <laughs> Sandy would be horrified. Probably. <laughs> Okay, Sam D, if the ball bearing on a 6105 8110 has rusted into the case, is there a way to get it and the spring out to replace it with a new one? And I love me my gin and tonics, and I would recommend Grey Whale Gin or Bombay Sapphire Gin, my personal faves. I will look for those. Bombay Sapphire, I've certainly heard of Grey Whale, I haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you're talking about the click ball in the case of a 6105, and you're saying it's rusted in place. There's rusted and then there's rusted. It depends. Is it just stuck in place? Can you see the top of the ball? Is it just not moving at all? Or is it one of those things where it's like the top of the ball is missing and it's just like a circular pit with rust in it? So it, it depends. Um, if the click ball is in there, I try to, I hold the case firmly and I get the flat of um, a pair of tweezers. So, because I don't want to slip and scratch anything. And you have, so you have the side of the case and I take the flat, imagine this is the click ball and I take the flat of this and I try to see if I can get that moving. I'll, I'll put some oil, penetrating oil on it first, let it sit for a while and see if I can get it to move. Um, that typically will work. If the ball is in there, and you should be able to get it moving. If it's the other thing where the thing is rusted out, it's simply missing, you've got to find, you gotta get the stuff out of there. And again, I've done it. Um, you have gotta be careful, because when you're working in that area, if you have something like a Dremel or a tool that you're using with a lot of pressure, if it slips, it's gonna shrink and it's gonna skitter across the lug and the side of the thing, and it will leave an indelible, gigantic scratch. Ask me how I know that. Um, and so you have to use a very fine poker, put tape over the case to protect it, and then basically with magnification, very slowly work your way into that hole. They just stopped and were looking in here. I don't know. Maybe they were looking to see if we had any packages on our front. There have been package thieves working over there. Really? How no, do you well, know? no, I see it in the next door thing. Not in our cul de sac, oh. but uh, over there more towards Taft Hill. Uh. Um, what was I saying? But anyway, but then you got to figure out what the actual status is. You got to figure out what's, what's in there. And so you just got to be careful. I bet they are package thieves. Yeah, because they stopped and they were looking at the front of our house and they just did a loop. Mm -hmm. And they're Colorado Rockies fans. <laughs> anyway, go on. <laughs> Mike D, random observation, are you guys super cold nature, keep your AC blasting, or is it not currently 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit in Colorado? It is 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit in Colorado, and we have our AC, but also we're, a lot of the houses here are half built into the ground, and so we're low here, which means it gets chilly. And also our house is not insulated very well, so um, it gets really hot if we don't have the air blasting. Yeah, the upstairs isn't insulated very well. This lower level where it stays cold naturally, like when we, before we had air, you could live here down in, down in the basement during a heat wave and be more or less okay. Mm -hmm. So the thing is we're trying to keep the upstairs cool because we need to re have all the insulation redone in the top top of the house. Um, so to keep that livable, it's, it's cold enough down here that I have sodas on a shelf and they're cold enough to drink. I wish I was wearing socks. Do you want me to get you? I, I have socks. Do you want my socks? Ew. What? You don't? Do you no. want to take a break and go get your socks? No, I'm okay. What? Here, do you want my footies? No. Why don't you take my footies? No, I don't like sharing shoes. That's weird. What? <laughs> it's your feet are going to be cold. No. Oh, God. My question. Recently, I bought one of the small Flieger? Flieger? Flieger. Flieger style Seiko 5 the SNK805 because I have this sneaking suspicion that Seiko will get rid of the Seiko 5s we know and enjoy and continue this trend of ever bloated pricing on ever increasingly edgy looking street watches. What do you think? Think they will kill off the small affordable 5s? I don't know. I would hope not actually. The SNK809s, those are the really small dress watches with the frosted cases. I could get one out. You... Yeah, because I don't know what you're talking about. Let me go get one. 
Why are you walking around with a sword? Why not? I have one. Why not wear one? Why not have it? Look at all the swords. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, what are you going to do? For those of you in the know, Rei Kunimitsu. Uh, there we go. Oh, one of those. Yeah, see, I told you. It's these are these are great great watches. They're they're usually the price point is around a hundred dollars. They have a, a modern Seiko movement in them. They're very they're strongly made. I love the 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 frosted finishes on them. They're super affordable, especially for like young guys who are just getting into it. You you want to buy an automatic? Look, it's got day date and everything. It's legible, clean, Flieger design. I hope Seiko never gets rid of them. I mean, I think they're they're. Absolutely perfect watches for what they are. Like, if I was feeling sneaky, I would actually take one of these and I have a couple 6R15 movements, put a 6R15 but modify it so it's a 6R16, which means it is day and date. And then you have a real stealth watch. Like, it'd be a perfect travel watch. Because, you know, it's easily replaceable, it's waterproof, it's legible, it's not worth a whole lot. You can do whatever you want. I think they're fantastic. I hope Seiko never gets rid of them. Um, because it's kind of the bread and butter of what Seiko did, but they're cool. What? No, I'm just waiting. What? That's, that's her lot in life when it comes to me. Just waiting. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Lane Edwards. Hey, Lane, weren't you going to mail me something? I've been waiting for, I think, like a, three weeks now for a package in the mail to come from Lane Edwards. Um, maybe I'm confused? Uh, anyway, I'll write you. Oh, Lane Edwards. Hey, guys, just keep swimming. The 6309 is awesome and still getting lots of wrist time. Thanks again. As for a Mac V reissue, I think it sells like hotcakes. I just wish Shaka would add gray sunburst dials to more of their watches. Like the classic like mid late yeah i mean it's cool that color um if they could do that that'd be fine i am kind of amazed that they haven't come back with that particular thing with a loomed mac v knowing them though they would come up and they would make it into some kind of limited edition special pricing jdm only thing i mean I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking slowly because I'm thinking about, at the same time, about how that watch would look and what the best configuration would be. Well, even back in the day, they were essentially just a different dial on, um, on a watch that had a, a, just a plain civilian version. And all they did was change the dial. So you could take something like the like the, you know, like the Sarb line and just throw that dial in there and it would be how they did it back in the day. I don't know. I wish they'd do it. I wonder if they're going to. They're not going to. What? No, they're not going to. Con MCN. Thanks for answering two of my questions this week, Spencer and Sabrina. I decided to pass on the helm and have set my heart on buying a 6306 or a 6309. Fingers crossed I can buy a reasonable example in the near future. Yeah, the thing is... You know, it's amazing. I've been saying the same thing for 10 years or more, actually. The time to buy vintage watches, vintage Seiko, is is now. People have been waiting for a long time for them to go down in value, and they're not going down in value. I mean, there's a, such a thing as a bubble, sure, maybe, but I don't... This bubble has been going on. Seikos have been rising in value for... Uh, 20 years. Or... All I keep thinking about is that GQ, Robert Downey Jr. interview, and he's like, what do you think? I have a Seiko? I don't know. But he has 50 bajillion dollars, so he can yeah, buy whatever he wants. I looked at his watches, and he has... He, well, his taste is rather flamboyant, flamboyant. Also, he is looking at price dollar tags. and they're... Yeah, but he has a, a moon watch. Yeah, that's and his that's cheapest like, watch. It, but that's like his baby. He loves that watch. Well, it's a great watch. It's a classic. He just doesn't, you know, if price is if, if price is your bottom line for what separates you from other collectors, then you're going to be, you know, you're going to be the people that are buying, you know, original Paul Newman Rolexes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, I would like to think if Mr. Downey were here, he and I could sit down and <laughs> talk watches and I might be able to change his mind a little. 
What, I couldn't? No. I'm an excellent salesman. It's true, you are. So, I mean, I'm certain that I could, I could <laughs> bring him around. Okay. So if somebody knows Mr. Downey and wants to clue him in on this video, then he can take <laughs> some time and we can sit down and talk and talk about watches. What? <laughs> I have no problem whatsoever. I'm not, I'll talk to anybody. I know you will. As my dad said. <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. Did you finish that question? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Nick Carvelis. Hi, Spencer. Like your videos, very relaxing. Even with me, like, cackling? I guess it's I your work videos, not me. <laughs> I think so, actually. People say that about the... Oh, I thought that lady was pushing a giant trash bin. It's a stroller. <laughs> yes. Oh, great. <laughs> It's a nice job. The watch is rejuvenated, clean, and shiny as new. Disappointing the fact that you never show us on camera how you fix the Arbor Jewel into position. Secrets of the trade that shouldn't be disclosed, I suppose. No, nothing like that. Um, I am I, I am only passingly confident in my skills, and I still have to work very carefully and think very hard when I'm doing those stuff, those to putting those jewels in, uh, to make sure that it's done correctly. It's easy when you're using, I use a Zeitz jeweler. Uh, it's like a hand reamer with, with a bunch of different bits in it. The big danger when you're doing that is that if you don't really, if you're not careful, you the the hole can walk. It can the new bigger hole you're drilling can can move. Especially a lot of those, they're ovaled out, right? The holes are oval, they're not round anymore. So when you're using a bit on them, it's going to slide into that extra space that was worn out, which means the end result, the final hole where the jewel goes, is going to be in the wrong place. And then you're going to have problems with binding or the or the, the, the mainspring uh, arbor not being straight inside the, inside the jewel and, and it binds there. I don't know. I guess part of me thinks that because I still have challenges getting that done every single time, because everyone is slightly different, that maybe I am not the kind of person to be teaching anybody how to do any of that stuff, because clearly I don't know how to do it myself. So it's not secrets or anything else like that. Also, my priority is the watch that's in front of me, less the video that I'm making. And so the only, I, I would have, I'm right on top of it when I'm doing that stuff. And I can't think of any way to have a camera in there to see what I'm doing. And frankly, it's not, it's not my primary consideration. It's not the priority. The priority is repairing the watch, not making the video. Wayne Taylor. Great video as always, Spencer. Looking for some advice. I'm currently looking for a replacement crystal for a 7C43710. Looking online, it seems that the 7548 and the 6309 all use the same crystal. Is this correct? Can you please advise? Those crystals, the very late 7548s and the big and the 7C43710s. Wait, where's the? Yeah, the 7C43710, like the very last of the 7 C, uh, the 7549 200 meters, they have a crystal screw down ring, not a snap on ring, a screw down ring. And when you have a screw down ring, you have to basically have a corresponding notch in the outside of the crystal for the that ring to seat into and push down. That crystal is extremely hard to find. I haven't seen a new one in many years. Uh, so the earlier crystals will not work, as far as I understand. Um, and I, I, I've only had a few of those 7C43s in my time. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how they're built otherwise, but those crystals are different for a reason. What? My teeth hurt. I'm sorry. They, my braces. Uh, Joe Washell. I do like the Jubilee bracelet of the SKX... 007. In fact, I can't wear the SKX on a rubber strap because of the crown guard, which then tends to dig into my wrist, a major flaw of the SKX's case in my opinion. With the bracelet, I don't have that problem, and it's very comfortable to wear. I don't get why so many people complain about it. I don't either. I don't know why people bitch about the, the, the Seiko Jubilee. It's, it's solid link. Um, they're kind of a pain to resize, sort of, um, but they're a strong bracelet. They they don't break. 
uh, they're, 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 they're solid link, um, they're inexpensive. Maybe people don't like them because when they're brand, brand, brand new, they sound kind of jingly, like a, like a, a cheap bracelet. Um, but they're not cheap, it's just how they sound. But any of these old school folded link Seiko bracelets, when I clean the hell out of them and they go through the ultrasonic and they come out and they're perfectly, perfectly clean, they have that same tinny jangle. So I think they're excellent quality. I don't know, I literally, I don't understand why people complain about them. I've, I've never understood it. Because people like to complain? Yes. <laughs> not me though. Oh no, you never complain. <laughs> D Mitz 22. I have been buying both Viton and Buna O rings, gaskets, and seals forever. I use the Viton ones in refrigeration because they are impervious to fluorocarbons. You can use the non Viton ones and make them last forever by using Super Lube on them, which I always use on my watch seals and gaskets because of the extreme temperature and absolute resistance to chlorine and salt water. What is Super Lube? So you're telling me that this super lube is going to, it will stop loss of volatile, volatile, uh, the, the volatile elements in a Buna um, gasket and stop it from aging and oxidizing? So if that's true, can you write me that? I want to know what this stuff is, this super lube. So if you could tell me that, that would be great. Oddball W. Hey, don't worry about the lighting. I can see you guys just fine. And when you cut to the bench, I can see everything just fine. Not sure what people are whining about. That's the beauty of YouTube. If you're a video pro, you can spend as much money time as you want and get the quality perfect. If you're not, you don't have to worry about it. If there was a quality threshold on this platform, we would miss out on so much great content from creators who are good at things other than just video production. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. We I, I, I'm trying to think of how our video production could be worse, and I'm I'm challenged to figure that out. <laughs> I guess we could be trying to do it by hand. Yes. Maybe one of these days. Like how you when I was just talking about you being in the other room with the, where your office used to be, and you didn't have the clippy thing, yep. and you were just holding it, and somebody bought you a clippy thing. Mm -hmm. It just showed up in the mail, <laughs> uh, and I still use it, even though it's broken like three different ways. I still use it. I never bought a new holder. But ivory handled Colts. <laughs> Sorry. Mario Squilla Chioti. What was your dad's profession? You were waxing about his makeshift collection of bespoke tools. It sounds interesting, and it is an interesting angle that seemingly you and your father excelled in technical fields. Um, my father was a scientist, he was a microbiologist. But, but, he was the first generation in his entire family to have any education whatsoever past high school. Um, all the people in his family were they were they were immigrants, recent immigrants from um, like like the Lithuania, former German Empire um, area, and they had nothing, and they were all you may do with what you could. Dad always talked about uh, being a child of the Depression. Um, and so his father refused to spend money on anything and they would, if they, if he needed a tool, cause he was a master machinist, if they needed a tool or did something, they would simply make it. Dad was all about problem solving. He said he basically almost everything in life is about problem solving. I think there's something to that. So dad would, he would, he had no problem whatsoever modifying something or fixing something himself. I mean, he would rather just do it himself. He. I mean, when he started paying people as he got older on in age to do things around the house, it was very strange. I kind of remember him making some tool for something, but I can't remember what. Well, she said, I'll get the boot. <laughs> um, you know, he would, I mean, I remember he, he, not even the same year that he died, I, we came over there at one point, and he was inside fixing their washing machine, their dishwasher. Um, and the washing machine actually was having all kinds of problems, but... Um, he just, if he had something, he would look at it, he wouldn't want to wait, he wouldn't necessarily order the right tool. If he could come up with a tool to make it work, he would do it. Um, and so that was how I was raised. And so a lot of my tools are kind of ad hoc as, as a result. It's just kind of what I'm used to. I mean, my parents never bought anything new. We got new clothing twice a year as kids, twice a year. We got new clothing at Christmas and uh, right before school started. Other than that, no new clothing for the entirety of the year. 
But if your stuff was falling apart, I guess your mom, mom would, fix, would it. fix it. She would patch it she, and fix his it. His mom was a seamstress. So. Yeah, so she was a seamstress, so they would just fix it. I grew up believing that we had no money. Not no money, but that things were real tight, like the wolf was at the door. And it wasn't until after my father died that we found out that, in fact, he was a bit of a miser. Okay, last one from Archie. Back to the old good lightning quiz from the original author. Sorry I couldn't remember. I'm sorry we couldn't we remember. We hadn't heard from you in a while. Yeah, it's I true. I hope you're okay. We do hope you're okay. Okay, one, Fender or Gibson? Oh, Fender. Fender. Gibsons are really heavy, like SGs and stuff, and plus, you know, I don't know, I just, I've never been a, a Gibson guy. Well, no, but if it was like, if you're talking like old Gibson, like one of the old Gibson, like, white eagles, like the 58 Gibson, like, fat body, um, uh, uh, what, like a Brian Setzer's guitar, um, those are really cool. What? 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 She, she dropped, dropped the... the salsa. Go get Sadie. Where's Sadie? <laughs> We're so close to finishing. We are so close to finishing. Hang Wait, on. But what was your answer? I said Fender. Oh, you did say Sadie's Fender. Sadie's dealing with the problem. <laughs> anyway, two Seiko Seven Thousand Two or SKX. I say SKX. I hate to say it, SKX, because I like that the, the, the dial design is excellent. Three, PlayStation or Xbox. I have an X, I got an Xbox first because I wanted to play Halo, um, and I did that, and I just got a PS4 because of a stupid situation that I don't feel like going over. Um, and I have to say, I think the PlayStation is built better. Really? Yes. I bought the very first PlayStation when it first came out, PlayStation 1, um, specifically for Tomb Raider. But other than that, I've always been a PC gamer. Uh, 6619, Mac V, SOG, or Rolex Explorer? Rolex Explorer. Uh, you're talking two completely different things. Um, the Mac V SOG has so much character, and it's really cool, and the movements are really nice. The thing is, is if two of if those two watches were sitting, you lost a whole thing of salsa. Yeah, Sadie was not dealing with it uh, because she was asleep, and I went in and I stared at her and she said, "See what time it is." She's just, still in bed. I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. Willow, never come in my room again. And Willow's like, special in your room. Well, don't ever come in my room again. Anyway, are we done with that? Which one? This one. Did you finish your thought process? Oh, no, no. If the, okay, all I was going to say was if the two watches were on the table in front of me, choose one. There's no dollar figures attached to them. I have to choose the Rolex Explorer because they're worth a ton of money. I mean, just... I thought money was not an object. Well, I mean, I don't really get worked up about money. Money is a tool. Uh, I'm not really, like, a greedy person. No, I don't, really. I mean, money happens, you know, whatever. Uh, but, I mean, the difference between a, a Mac V, which is going to be, best case scenario, $1,500, $1,600, if it's a Gen 1, a real and early Rolex Explorer, it's worth, like, $14,000. There are two completely different things. But in a vacuum... Neither watch is worth anything. They're both worth a dollar. I might have to go with the Mac V. I think it's a really, the 6619 Mac V. It's a beautiful design. It's a little bigger than the Explorer. Um, it's, a, it's, a nice, it's a nice setup. It's a great movement that I believe in. Um, I, and I just love the way that that, that gray uh, loom num numeral dial looks. Crocs are sneakers. 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 <laughs> no, I, I do like a croc. I haven't owned crocs for a long time. Remember, I had those orange ones. No, I had the orange ones. You, you had, had the, black ones. I had black ones. You had the orange ones. Yes, they were good for gardening. They were good for gardening. Uh, I can't answer the next one. Rolex GMT 1675 or Submariner 5513. I don't know what they are. Basically, the Rolex GMT 1675 is like my root beer, except it's it's Pepsi with the black dial and the, and the Pepsi so bezel. 
and so it's a 24 hour automatic versus the 5513 which is like my um my steve mcqueen watch that i, I built out of parts one. you would mm -hmm. i hate to say it actually <laughs> this is the longest lightning quiz that ever happened what <laughs> what I'm almost done. We're almost done and we'll come upstairs and do lunch in a little bit. Can you close the door? We'll be upstairs in just a few minutes. Why? Because. You have to do videos. Yeah, we're almost. A little more time. Just a little more and then we're done. Okay. Um, I honestly would go with the GMT because uh, I already, I have a sub. And so having two subs would, is still actually strikes me as kind of silly. I'm considering selling my 5513, by the way. I'm considering it. Um, if you're looking for a relatively affordable 5513, I might have one for you. But um, yeah, the 1675, I would definitely, I'd be down for owning. Fortnite or Animal Crossing? I would never play Fortnite. I tried Animal Crossing and it, I don't get it. It was so boring. I'm not into casual gaming. I did play Stardew Valley for a while, but then it got really boring. I like shooting things with fucking things. I've never played either, and neither one is kind of my th alley. I mean, I played enough Cafe World. I don't, I don't need to <laughs> do anything like that. Aussie Pogue or Silver Pogue? Aussie. The Silvers, they're just for me, and I've owned, God, seven or eight Silvers, some of them in exquisite condition. They're just too blingy for me. It doesn't work, but the Aussie Pogue, the, the, that beautiful... Because the Aussie Pogues are the 6002s, um, typically. 6001, 6000, 6001s, I owned a 6001 completely original that had never been restored. I'll insert a picture of it right here. And the 6002s, though, those dials, they tended to be a little richer, darker yellow, more like a golden egg yellow. And that with the black, they just look so nice together. James Bond or Jason Bourne? James Bond. Probably J James Bond, but I tell you, the first Bourne movie was great. Yeah, it was good. That was a great movie, but probably, yeah, Bond. I, I like the Sean Connery Bond movies. I can't watch him. He's such a sexist bastard. I know, but... Yeah, the crazy <laughs> thing, I remember when, I remember, what is it? It was in the 90s, I think. Um... Again, in San Francisco, and we were talking about this Bond stuff. We were talking about Bond and Sean Connery, and we were at a bar drinking to Scooter Girls and stuff. And they were like, yeah, you know, he probably slapped me, but that's okay. I don't understand it. <laughs> Cycling or jogging? Jogging, I can't, I can ride a bicycle, but I have terrible balance, and I'm like, mm. Um, I, I... I used to ride a bike exclusively for years. All I commuted on a bike all the time. Um, for exercise, jogging. I am deeply sad that I can't jog anymore, but I, I just can't. He had bad knee. My bad, my knee just, I started trying to do it again a few weeks ago, and it was so great. It was so great, it was so great being out there running. And then like at night, it's just like a ball of frozen fire in my knee. It was awful, can't do it. Okay, that's it. That's it, that's it. So now we're going to go make lunch for people, and it's um, it's going to be fine, but thank you so much for your questions. Um, so I guess two final things. If you're looking for a relatively affordable Rolex 5513, please message me. Uh, and secondly, the Aussie Pogue existed. Stop with the nonsense. It's I'm not even going to get wrapped up about it. It's just a, it's a baseless assertion to make. The evidence is out there, and anybody at this point who still says that it was never made by Seiko is just trying to troll people. Yes, yeah, someone walking down the road. What? She had something stuck to her calf. Okay, have a great weekend. Bye, Bye. folks.